it's, 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 it's done, Ollie. He's dead, Jim. He's dead, Jim. This is the part of this is the part of the mission where Bones looks at Kurt and says, "He's dead, Jim. He's dead." The new Air 48 quart portable electric fridge tries to set itself apart from the saturating market of lower cost 12 volt fridges. While its outwardly visible features don't exactly denote anything novel or unique compared to its competitors, there's one feature unique enough on this fridge that it just might make it stand out enough to warrant your serious consideration, especially if maximum mobility is what you're looking for. You see, most of the fridges in this space rely on a constant external supply of power from either a wall outlet, your vehicle, or a portable power station. This is all fine and dandy provided your cold item needs don't extend beyond the reach of an outlet. Well, New Air has done something about that in this iteration of a fridge by incorporating an optional 173 watt battery and solar panel kit. New Air did send us this fridge in exchange for a review, however we didn't get those items with ours as they were a separate SKU and not included in our deal, but you could imagine if we had. Because the battery is integrated into the back of the fridge, it allows for a cleaner wireless experience when you need to take the fridge out and move it to the action, like at a picnic party or a tailgate. The integrated roller wheels aid in this endeavor, and unlike other models we've tested, don't seem to protrude from the sides all that much, meaning they only have a minimal effect on the fridge's overall footprint, allowing you to reserve less space for the fridge in the back of your vehicle. One other point here, while we are on the subject of vehicles, this battery could be seen by some as a more cost-effective way to elevate their overlanding game. For a long time, fridges have been one of those improvements that begets other improvements. And what I mean by that is, when you add a fridge to your vehicle, you're not just adding a fridge to your vehicle, you also need to power it. And this means one of two things, either wiring it up to your chassis battery, an OEM electrical system, or a different power system. While the cheapest way to go is obviously using your existing chassis battery, it's also the least convenient and most risky as it increases the chance you'll wake up one morning to a vehicle that doesn't start. To avoid this, you'll either need to invest in a dual battery system for your vehicle or a portable power station. Either way, you're adding costs that can easily double or triple the price of a budget fridge. Priced at $199.99, the 173 watt hour battery pack can eliminate that expense and complexity for some, as it will allow the fridge to maintain itself for somewhere between, well, I can't exactly speak to that directly since we never got to test it, I'd say that it would probably keep a fridge going for about 8 to 10 hours. Once you get past all the mobility aspects, there's still quite a lot to like about this fridge, starting at the heart of the matter, the compressor. For a while now, people have been getting wine to budget fridges featuring the storied LG compressor. New Air has equipped theirs with one from the Korean mark known for its lineup of technologically advanced home appliances and electronics. For a little more peace of mind, New Air does offer an included standard one-year warranty, and even more assurance can be purchased via one, two, and three-year extended product protection plans. I'm not a fan myself of paying for extended warranties, but they're there if that's your thing. As a fridge, the new air does its job and it does it fairly well. It's a permanent dual zone configuration and includes some handy drop-in baskets that make it really convenient the first time you have to go digging after the thing in the bottom of the fridge. Each zone can be configured to hold temperatures between 68 degrees Fahrenheit and four below zero. So let's get into the dislikes. First among these is that the battery doesn't come standard. At an extra $200 for one, this suddenly goes from being a value fridge contender to pushing the price of bigger named brands entry level offer. Plus, if you don't ever buy the battery and just leave the space blank, you're kind of carrying around dead air that could either went to cooling capacity or shrinking down the fridge's overall footprint. The overall vertical height was kind of irritating as well, at least when we had it mounted in the Forerunner. The competing brand fridge we've reviewed previously was a couple of inches shorter and that made it a lot easier to get in and out of the back where the added height of the drawers and the already low Toyota roof profile meant we had to turn the fridge long ways so that we could actually get the fridge lid open enough to reach in. As mildly irritating as all of these items seem, they pale in comparison to the two really big flaws. First among those is the display and user interface. At first glance, the control panel looks not just harmless, but actually kind of pleasing. But just like an iceberg, there's a lot to fear beneath the surface. First, 
it's the button. Well, not really buttons, but those buttons where you touch them and they don't move, nor do they give you any sort of tactile feel that you've actually pressed one. Honestly, if it was just the buttons, it would be a minor irritation, but the actual interface leaves a lot to be desired, starting with the lack in quantity of these buttons. For any particular adjustment, you only get one set of up-down button. Need to change one zone's temperature? Well, no problem. Need to change the other zones? Sometimes problem. To change the setting being manipulated, you have to use the little cog looking button. However, that little button, it's a multitasker and it also changes the selection category to also choose between which battery protection mode setting you're using and to also select between the eco and max cooling modes. Supposedly, a short press manipulates inside of a particular setting, while a long press is supposed to change the category. That's all fine and dandy if it worked consistently, but I could never seem to figure it out and would sit back there frustratingly hammering away until it goes the way I want, which could take some time. Okay, anywhere. You're really not scoring points with how unintuitive your interface is. Like, this isn't good. This thing with the controls, I've been trying to get it in and out of uh, modes for a minute here, and that's because there's only one set of controls. It's really unintuitive, and I don't like it. Next is some questionable durability. The fridge itself is made out of, like, a plastic that is very reminiscent of, say, a Coleman cooler from the late 1980s, early 90s. It's that feel. And ultimately, on the last trip, we took it on to Colorado, where my son and I were using it. We had it outside of the vehicle because we had put it over next to the power bank while we were charging the power bank from a solar panel. Went to go put that thing back into the back of the Forerunner, and the damn handle, the one, the extendable handle that you're supposed to be able to tow this thing with, just snapped. I think we can fix it. What? It's broken. It's completely cracked. <laughs> The whole goddamn thing is. Hey, hey, kid. I think it's Yeah, you gotta get the other side too. <laughs> Can you even get it to engage it? Yeah, I think so. Oh. Oh, there we go. Oh, how lovely. Now you can pull it around like a fucking rickshaw. Look at him. Look at him go. He's rickshawing the new air and now there's no handle on the front which negates that whole idea of this being a rolly roller cooler because there's nothing to rolly roller it from kind of a problem so who is this fridge good for well assuming that the durability doesn't play out for you the way it's played out for me uh it's got to be someone who's going to buy and use that battery there are just too many other lg compressor driven fridges out there at lower price points it's also the only feature unique enough on this fridge to separate itself from the competition basically if you're someone who wants to have a rolling cooler that doesn't require ice that 173 watts is going to be just enough to keep your fridge going for up to about one overnight so if you're gonna be somewhere for a while though you'll end up needing solar panels and that same portable power bank infrastructure every other 12 volt fridge relies on now i could see this thing shining bright for tailgates parties and minimalist road trips Heck, it'd make an ideal addition to your family grocery getter and allow you to handle some side excursions without worrying about your ice cream melting before you got home. That's assuming that you don't have the same durability issues and after having seen this issue with the handle breaking off, I would probably strongly encourage you to actually buy one of the protection plans were you to buy this fridge because I have a feeling you're going to need it.